I look at the situation, I accept the scientific information about climate, uh, and also I realize that from the other side there's a forcing function of there's not going to be enough fuels to generate this level of CO2. So whether I want to save the planet or whether I want to deal with the, uh, the declining amounts of resources that are coming, I've got to start cutting my personal consumption, and I have to take that from 19.6 uh, to 1. So that's the engineering problem that I've given for myself. I want to uh, digress just a little bit and come up with a slightly different distribution. Um, the rich world is, by the way, the OECD, the uh, Organization of Economic Cooperative Development Nations. That's um, the United States, mostly Europe, with Japan and uh, Australia uh, and Korea tossed in. The OECDL um, is the, uh, excuse me, there's the United States as one category, the other rich nations. And finally, there's the rest of the world, which is 85% of the population. And that's the brown uh, that's, that's covering the globe. Now, this chart is uh, meant to be, uh, it's a little hard to, to grasp, and I do have a, a detailed description in the book. But starting out on the left, it shows you this division, which is the United States, the, the rich European countries in Japan, and then the rest of the world. Uh, we have 4.5% of the population, Europe and the other, the OECDL, has 10.5, and 85% of the people in the world, which is 5.7 billion, are in the third category. If you look at the income per capita, you see the, the point I said earlier that income and CO2 and oil, or oil, gas, coal consumed, are roughly all tied together. There's a, a rough correlation between those. And so we see that the rest of the world, looking at the brown, uh, they're right there at the bottom. They have a very small amount of the income. They generate a small amount of the CO2, and they use a small amount of the energy. And the United States at the top is using uh, r roughly eight times what the average per capita is of those uh, five, or these uh, 5.7 billion people. That's no longer acceptable to the rest of the world. And they're, they're looking at this and starting to realize that the problem has been the leadership, the OECD, United States, and Europe. And basically, it's really just been a continuation of the old colonial policies because we moved into globalization and began to continue to maintain this huge difference. But that huge difference of income, which was okay maybe for us, it's no longer okay when you continue to have this huge disparage in the amount of CO2 generation. China has simply made the point that you started it, you brought on the problem, you've done most of it, uh, we're not going to budge until you cut back. That's the Chinese position and of course the position for uh, most of the rest of the world. So I, I moved from that and said, okay, I've got the, uh, the, the world situation, the big picture. How does this break down into what I actually use? And I use the 57 barrels of oil as, as the, uh, this is a repeat from the preceding chart showing my oil consumption, uh, Europe, Japan, and in the rest of the world. Then I take that 57 barrels and I break it down into food, cars, and homes because that's my focus is that 67 percent of the energy and I note that um, in terms of food alone I consume more than ever, any any of the other 5.7 billion people and in terms of my car I consume a lot more and in terms of the house I consume almost twice what the total con per capita consumption is of that 5.7 billion people and that's a strong motivator for me personally to see the level of injustice of myself living so well compared to the rest of the world. And so it comes back to personal change and, and uh, uh, that my personal choice is going to determine my future relative to this problem. And to repeat Gandhi is uh, be the change you want to see in the world. So I want to talk just briefly about, uh, uh, and I'm going to move to some action plans is there's an underlying principle, which is the community principle, 
uh, which is Community Solutions View, and this was founded by our, uh, or it was established by our founder, Arthur Morgan, in 1940, after he left the TVA and running of Antioch. And it basically says community um, is, is an approach in which you, you share and you save and you work together. It's that, that principle of, of cooperation, of saying, I'm not in this alone. And the opposite is competing, hoarding, and consuming, and that is the core values of this culture. Uh, if you look at our economic system, it's now spread uh, throughout universities everywhere. The, the principle is, is each of us tries to get more and more of the share and increase his share of the available resources. The market in its wisdom will create something so that we can all do that. And we have continued that until we reach this massive inequity and we have another uh, principle that was, I think, established by Reagan that says even if you're getting less and less and we're transferring more and more of the wealth to the, uh, to the richer people, since the whole pie is growing, you're doing a little bit better. And that's kind of what we bought into. So we have bought into increasing inequity under the argument of you're getting a little bit better every day. Uh, but that's not going to continue and, and we need to uh, set our mindset and, and create a context where curtailment is not suffering. That we're either righting a wrong or we're living simply so that others may simply live. So it's really a cooperation principle. And one of the things people tell us that, uh, I say, well, you're a little more upbeat. You've got lots of solutions and you put on the conferences and you make these nice films. Um, but we are living quite simply. We, I don't know what our average uh, square foot is of the staff, maybe 250 square feet. But we're living in a community of Yellow Springs, Ohio, with a lot of like-minded people. And we have a lot of fun. We, 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 it's a very active community. We're growing food. We have CSAs. So when you get off the materialistic track and start looking at the community track, you get a, a happiness really starts to uh, grow in your ordinary life. So moving to action, first, housing. We have 15 barrels of oil equivalent. We have to cut that 80%. We need to do deep retrofits of all our buildings. Uh, and we use the German passive house as a model. And we've actually done one, which I'll be talking about. Cars, uh, the personal car period is over. And we need to enter a ride-sharing system. We've designed something called the Smart Jitney, which I'm real excited about. And we'll be talking about that. And food is, um, uh, we have to in, in, in just stop the industrial animal products. And I was very happy when the woman talked about what's going on in the uh, uh, food production world. Animals, these billions of animals we're killing every year, are living in horrible conditions. And I once went to a, a chicken factory, and that's when I became a vegetarian. Because no matter what the implications were to my diet or all these health aspects, uh, I didn't, could not be responsible for the, the, the torture that's really going on in the animal industry. So I just changed my diet. And if you change your diet, you cut your energy consumption, giving up industrial meat, you go from 10 barrels of oil equivalent to 5. So you make a 50% cut by that one action. So first, talking a little bit about houses. Uh, this is a chart from the book, and it shows the change since 1950. Uh, since 1950, we went from 260 square foot per person to 800. The new U U.S. home size doubled, and our residents are twice as large as Europe or Japan, and we use 2.4 times the energy. So if you want to cut your energy 50%, uh, trying to get that 90% cut in terms of houses, you really live like a European. This is not asking you to live like uh, someone in uh, uh, the deepest part of Africa is, is the fact is there's just so much excess that we can cut that and remain uh, having a full productive life. 48% uh, of the U.S. energy is used in buildings. We've been focusing a lot on, in our culture on cars, but the cars are much easier fixed because they only last about 15 years and our buildings last about 70 years. So we have about 130 million residences uh, and we're, we're building roughly about 1.5 per year. So even if all these new residents were 
very energy efficient. It's not going to make any difference for 75 years. 